<laughs> Another sepia dream giving way to a technicolor day. I had somehow arrived at a local music store and found myself face to face with the Gibson Les Paul's interesting forgotten cousin. <laughs> I knew the damn bastards had it in for me. They were trying to get me to compromise my principles, like a ruthless juju. Juju? No, no, it's a term of endearment. My family gave me a trace pack to Southern Italy. You understand? That's not the point. The point is that the Gibson Les Paul recording is not for the average rock star. The skilled studio musician, sure, but not for the live touring musician, okay? This had to be a trick. It was sitting there completely unlocked, and it was staring me in the face as if it were saying, just play me, as if it were the Epiphone Adam Jones Les Paul right next to it. This had to be a trick, and if it wasn't, I had to know. I had to know the truth. One of these pickups, I thought, as I picked it up, whoa. Sure as the Les Paul wait. The Les Paul was again accommodating. Finger gets rear gut cut. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. They expected this move. Or someone expected this move. Oh well, we've come this far. No turning back now. I decided to grab a strap so I could play it properly. Ah, this one'll do. 70s brown for 70s brown. Yep. 1971, I see. Hmm, hmm. Before my time, but definitely not before Les Paul's time. Hmm. I attached the strap and then grabbed a cable. Time was precious. And this interesting bit of 70s nostalgia was starting to grab attention. The last thing I needed now was bug eyed looky loose. Ah, Peter. Okay. Les Paul is powered by two high impeded slanted humbucker pickups that look like giant single coils, if you ask me. Connected to a master volume and several different tone selectors. We got a decades knob, hmm, hmm, a bass and a treble knob, high and low output setting, a phase switch, and a three way tone selector on what appeared to be a Telecaster kind of switch. Fender part on a Gibson? How blasphemous. I made a note of all these switches and knobs and planned to test them to the fullest. If anything's worth doing, it's worth doing right. I said this to the voice in my head. He didn't understand. Oh well, never mind, it was time to play. Rhythms, leads, no, single notes, chords, and all. I said standing around like a statue, I thought. I was absolutely blessed to try this thing out. Yes, yes sir, you belong on stage. All musical instruments tell stories, that's for damn sure. They have their narratives, their peaks, their valleys, their triumphs, and nervous breakdowns under the hot stage lights. And they also have audiences. Even those people are just side-standing spectators. Handling this exquisite piece of vintage gear got my mind racing into overdrive. I wondered how many fingers had previously graced this rosewood fretboard. I wondered how many smoky bar gigs had turned this one shiny split diamond yellow. And I wondered if these marks on the back were either just bugger rash or something else. Maybe somebody put a sticker back here that said, The only war worth fighting is a clashed war. But I had no time to get to the bottom of that. All I could do was play. Hope for the best. So, let's get down to brass tacks. You see, the Gibson Les Paul recording is a different instrument than the original Les Pauls from the 50s and 60s. As I'm led by the high and low output switch. <laughs> output, I thought. What? That was a close call. Huh? Could have been feeding back, drawing too much attention to myself. I think. Once I composed myself, I began playing again, experimenting with all the different knobs. The bass and the treble knobs I learned only affect their respective frequencies. In other words, turning the bass down does not add more treble, and vice versa. I couldn't figure out what was doing what at the store, but I did some digger deeping, as you can see here. Hmm. The phase switch only works when both pickups are selected, giving that characteristic out-of-phase quacky sound similar to a Stratocaster. <laughs> Through a tone selector bypasses different knobs and settings. <laughs> Decanon was rather interesting. I couldn't hear any real. It was then I began to wonder why Gibson and Les Paul even made this creation. Why take something as simple as a Gibson Les Paul with two pickups, two volumes, and two tones and give it more controls than a 747's flight deck? Why do that? Easy. The Les Paul recording was a product of the 70s. A time when musicians owned the music industry, and experimentation was taking place no matter where you looked. In the modern era, all these interesting electronics can still be found today in most recordings, particularly the phase out of phase switch, although the decade knob probably wouldn't fly at most gigs at most of my favorite bars. As the minutes wore on, I tried to keep a clear head, but all I kept feeling was the lonely feeling of exclusivity, and it never left. Even as I felt every single note and chord I played bounce off the fretboard and out of the amplifier, and hearing nothing but fine decibels ringing away on my eardrums, there is an unspoken agreement between you and the instrument, the Les Paul recording will sing, scream, and obey every single vice of your fingers. And you, in turn, will clean up your vocabulary, sit up straight, and drop $10 in the collection plate. Tuck in your shirt, and smile for the speed camera. Because every divorced, wrathful cop with a lesbian daughter is having a bad day. I'm looking for someone to take it out on.
Thank <laughs> you.